Welcome back to my garage. In this episode, we are checking the ignition timing of the Power Spark ignition, um, mixing up some fuel, and starting the bike for the first time after rebalancing. Okay, so first, a quick tip on uh, mixing oil in your fuel. Uh, what I used to do is uh, I uh, fill one of these measuring cups or containers uh, with the oil first. Just get this vent out of the way. And I fill that up to the amount I need for the amount of fuel I've got. And in this case, it's four liters and I'm running five percent mix so two this uh, DC liters point two or two hundred milliliters probably the easiest like that then I fill the cup up the rest of the way with fuel to mix it or to make the fuel more um, runny or less viscous viscous um, this might not be a problem for most uh, two stroke oils but for a 747 casserole kind um, that's kind of thick it's uh, much easier to do it this way than just pouring it into the or if you pour it into the measuring cup it's hard to get all of it out of there much easier when you mix the fuel with the oil and then pour it into the can. So, quick tip, yeah! <laughs> I just get something to stir it up with. Zip ties are great for mixing up the fuel and oil. This is a great oil, by the way. I've been running uh, the old R, Castor Castrol R oil before. Uh, but it uh, leaves a lot of residue in your engine. This does not leave that much residue. Though it does leave more uh, carbon and soot, soot than your uh, common low smoke synthetic oil. But if you don't know the benefits of uh, running castor oil, not castor oil, but castor oil, which this is part of it is, uh, search that up and see. And you might want to try using that yourself. But a modern blend like this A47, A747, is a good idea because the old uh, pure castor oil, uh, the old stuff with just pure castor oil, leaves lots of black goo and hard varnish inside your engine fast. So you'll have to tear it down every race. Which you probably do anyway, so no problem. And there's always some left, so I pour it back and do that one more time. Might be overly picky about getting all that oil out, but why not? Okay, I'll just leave that for later. Yeah, uh, I'm running straight uh, 98 octane that's run the european uh, so run in europe we use run uh, or is it mon no run research octane number uh, now um, what i plan to use because i know that this uh, is pro there's probably not uh, enough knock resistance in uh, the 98 run fuel is to mix it up with about 30% um, toline, 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 uh, whatever. So, um, a source for toline or toline uh, is uh, thinners. So, this cellulose thinner, uh, you might think as uh, cellulose. I won't, don't want that in my engine, but if you read the description, um, ingredients are toline, 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 the stuff you want. You could run with uh, sulean too, 
But uh, Sylvain uh, has a tendency to leave a lot more soot than the Tourlaine. So, uh, and Tourlaine is an ingredient in uh, the fuel running anyway, so no problem. The only problem uh, that can arise from running lots of Tourlaine in your mix is that it's, uh, um, it's it has a lower vapor pressure, I think. No, no. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to do exp uh, or what it's called, but uh, at lower temperatures, uh, the fuel might have a hard time uh, vaporizing in your engine, and it could just be uh, going through without combusting and uh, and just yeah, so leaning out your engine even though you're reaching the fuel mixture. But I digress. Is that yeah, whatever. Uh, okay, ignition. I'll bring you in closer here, or oh wait, I'll show you the tool I've made first. So this tool is a uh, gutted spark plug. I've cut off the top and uh, and pulled out the um, ceramic, the insulator. Um, then I've welded on uh, this small tab, and and that lets me zip tie a caliper to. The, to the plug, and then I can use the depth depth gauge down into the plug plug hole plug <laughs> plug hole, and uh, to check, for example, ignition timing or rotary valve timing. Uh, uh, this is uh, I've I've cut this up and made it specific for this task, but uh, this using it like this won't cause any damage damage to your calipers so you can just use uh, the ones you have if you have just one pair um, or one uh, the why why I did this is because with the clearance under my engine an upside down down position uh, I w I'm not able to rotate it without uh, lifting the front wheel off the ground but uh, or I wasn't but now that I've cut off the measuring sticky out parts here um, it's uh, I can barely rotate it into the holder. So I'll show you how I use this tool. Okay, so uh, the first thing I do is I thread the tool into the spark plug hole. And then I tighten it just enough so that it's easy for me to read off the tool. Like that. Then I push it down into the bore, and since there's a uh, kind of a break or locking function here, it's very easy to find top dead center doing it this way. So this is actually a very nice tool for finding exact top dead center, because what you do is you just rotate the engine around and pass top dead center. Check this number, and that's. It's uh, 40, I have to get a flashlight here. And the calipers say 48 point, nah, 48, 48 point zero. <laughs> so 48 millimeters. Okay, so I've uh, written that down. So that's top dead center. I got my relative uh, reading for top dead center. Now I want to figure out where my crank uh, or yeah crank sensor is triggering. So I'm uh, with this power power spark ignition. You use uh, this magnet to uh, program it. Uh, and to get into the programming functions of the unit, you just hold it where the sensor is and you turn it on. And then it's in, uh, and it will start flashing the various uh, menu items. And uh, now I'm uh, going to use the check sensor um, uh, function. <coughs> so that's sensor sensor angle, and now check sensor and what will happen now is that when I rotate the crank 
uh, when the crank uh, hits or the whole sensor picks up the magnet on my ignition trigger uh, rotor, um, the lights will uh, light up here. And then I know that, uh, and then I can um, uh, read off uh, my um, my distance from top dead center and find out how many degrees um, I'm at, and then check if it's uh, what I've entered into this ignition uh, system or change it if it's not. So uh, let's see here. So now I, I will just show you how it works and. And I will take the reading. So now I'm rotating, slowly rotating the crank. And there you can see. See if you can get both things in the frame here. So I'm rotating it, and there it's triggering. Okay, so now I'm, I have to do it real slowly and just stop exactly where it picks up the trigger. This is a great system. Uh, is, this is a great feature of this ignition because it's very easy to find out if you're triggering where you you are supposed to be triggering. There. Okay. And I'll just double check. That I'm actually stopping exactly where it lights up and I am. Okay. So then we can uh, turn it off again. And read off the measurement. And it's 64.1 millimeters. 64.1 millimeters. Okay, and uh, that is just a simple task of um, subtracting 61 point, uh, no, 60, 48 millimeters from 64.1 millimeters and uh, plugging that into some kind of uh, piston travel versus uh, crank degrees program or calculating it, but uh, no need for that trouble when you can just find uh, a calculator online which I will link in the description. So uh, 64.1 millimeters minus 48 that's 16.1 and then I will check what 16.1 millimeters from top dead center is in degrees. That's about 73 degrees from top dead center. Okay and then we'll go into uh, sen sensor angle and uh, see if it's the correct number and correct it if not. Okay, so I'm holding the magnet near the unit to get into the menu. And I'm waiting for sensor angle to pop up. I know it's 73, I want, so let's see what it is now. I think it's 75 maybe. 76 okay so and I uh, want it to be 73 okay I fucked up here that's the thing with this uh, one um, annoying thing about this unit is uh, you you have to uh, you it takes time to program it. You can't just punch in the numbers in software and uh, press enter. You have to wait for everything and uh, so uh, you won't need a computer but you will have to uh, it takes time. Okay so I'm at 7 and I use my magnet. Now 7 it's uh, is saved. And then 
This means that my ignition is picking up the sensor at 73 degrees before top dead center and it does all the calculating and fire, fires it at the uh, map I've uh, chosen. Okay, now it tells me it's done. We can turn it off. Okay, so um, that's it. It's just, I will just have to pour in the fuel here and uh, we can try starting it and see how that goes. Hopefully there's no uh, bad noises or anything and uh, I won't be able to uh, to do any testing today, just a short uh, startup because it's late and uh, there's neighbors with kids here and my own kid so uh, and uh, so my girlfriend will get pretty upset if I start uh, revving up the engine tonight but anyway uh, I'll bring you back when I'm ready to fire it up okay we're ready just turn on the coolant pump and the ignition the fuel fuel uh, valve is on choke is on Ignition coil is plugged in. Everything is hooked up. I think we are ready. Okay, so the way I started is uh, there's a small button on the clutch pulley. You can press in, and then uh, the shoes or there's uh, this brace that is locked. So the pulley, the clutch is locked. Then you can start it, and when and the start, engine start turn, it starts turning, uh, that pin flies out and disengages, so it uh, the clutch disengages. Okay, let's see if we can start it here. And as I said, it will just be a quick startup to confirm that it's working, because I can't create much noise tonight. seems to be uh, working just fine hooray okay so uh, my garage is starting to fog up here okay, I'll bring you back to my table okay that's it for tonight um, it seems to be working just fine now the big question remains uh, did the crank rebalancing fix the um, vibration vibration issues I hope so but unfortunately I cannot test it tonight because my neighbors and my girlfriend will get real angry so uh, as soon as I'm able to uh, uh, run my bike uh, after work when it's earlier and earlier and people won't get angry I will post a video about how it's turning out thanks for watching Please subscribe, click the like button, and I'll see you next time.